Hey, I'm JSH. You might know me um, as the owner of the Dominion Discord server. Um, yeah, and a long time ago, I did these D Dominion tier list videos. They were pretty popular on my channel. And I kind of wanted to go back and redo them, but I don't really feel as confident with myself as a player these days. So I thought I would just steal the rankings other people have made and throw up tier list versions of them on YouTube. Um, so I can totally cash in on the hard work other people have done. So shout outs to the Dominion Discord server, particularly Aku Chi, the guy with the cat avatar um, on Dominion Discord. Um, they did these rankings, not me. The only thing I'm going to add is I'm going to put my kind of arbitrary tier division <laughs> between the cards a little bit there. Um, I'll talk a little bit about each card as we go. Um, and we're going to see what the community came up with. What this is, is it's the Thunder Dominion uh card rankings for each expansion i'm gonna start with the base set and see how this video goes see if people like it if i need to make any changes or just quit you know my life or whatever okay so um, here's what we're gonna do yeah you should be familiar with this by now s is the good stuff d is trash um let's get going uh, we're gonna start off with what's at the very bottom of the list and work our way up all right and so bureaucrat is ranked the lowest um that's for good reason bureaucrat <laughs> is pretty bad all right, you gain a silver, which is not exciting. You don't even get to use it this turn. It goes on top of your deck, you know, unless you draw it. Uh, it has a really weak attack that top decks an opponent's victory card. Um, I mean, there's just, like there are some combos with this, but they're all very obtuse, very difficult to pull off. It's extremely situational. It's a bad card. It's a bad card. There's not much else to say about it. It's very rightfully um, has been ranked last every time this ranking has been done. Uh, next is mine which is also in the d tier uh, it's a little bit more useful than bureaucrat um i'd argue like if i was going to add an extra tier um <laughs> yeah maybe there could be one there but i think there's very little need to most of the time mine is going to be pretty awful it's just so slow turning a copper into a silver barely gains you anything silver to gold is okay but you know not too exciting what you really want to be gaining is alternate treasures like platinum crown uh i don't know fool's gold whatever something like that but it, no matter how you slice it, it's probably better to just thin out your copper and gain those cards than it is to use mine to upgrade them. Um, yeah, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's here, right? Uh, next, so we're going to jump up to the next tier, I think, and get Harbinger. Yeah, Harbinger is pretty weak. The, it's a cantrip. It can let you top deck a card that's in your discard. And this is occasionally useful, but that's just it. It's occasionally useful. Most of the time, you're barely even going to notice that anything happened when you did this. Uh, yeah, especially if your deck is drawing itself, Harbinger is just drawing cards for you. There's some combos that can go with it, but they're they're really kind of benign. And yeah, most of the time it's not even <laughs> worth mentioning them. But still, it's not a bad card to buy. Sometimes you'll buy it because it's better than silver or whatever, but, you know, not incredible. Next in the C tier is going to be Seller. Uh, Seller has like a high, I guess you could say a high ceiling as far as its usefulness goes. If you're drawing lots of cards... You can filter a lot of cards um, with Seller and draw a bunch of stuff, and it only costs two, so it's pretty cool. Uh, the problem is every other time Seller is in the game, it really just isn't all that exciting. Um, yeah, I mean, it could be outright bad it, with, like, the standard five-cost hand. Um, and sometimes, like, you dump a copper or whatever, and you draw a dead card with it, and that's not good either. So, yeah, like, Seller, like, there's, n there's nothing really selling it. <laughs> um, it it's not, not that amazing. All right, let's jump up actually to the next tier, um, hmm, or, or not. I kind of disagree with this ranking, uh, but yeah, Library is ranked down here, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. Uh, but Library basically lets you uh, draw up to seven cards in your hand. Draw is good, of course. Of course, this is very limited draw, um, and there's only like a couple of ways you can uh, utilize this thing. Uh, you know, you got to have like a way to reduce your hand size while also having a lot of actions to make it really, really good. Um, and a lot of the times it's just, it, it's a bad idea to add it to your deck, okay? Um, because you want to uh, draw past seven cards, ideally, and it doesn't let you do that at all. But, you know, in the right situation, it can be very strong. So I do like agree that it's better than Seller and Harbinger, because I think... Uh, the ceiling for it is maybe a little bit higher. Um, and, you know, it's it's okay every now Like, if it's your only draw option, it could be okay sometimes, but, you know, it's not exciting. Yeah, so the next card is Gardens. And this is why I'm struggling a little bit, because 
I personally think Gardens is weaker than the library, but whatever. This is how it was ranked. Okay, and I'm trying not to like <laughs> let my personal opinion dictate how this list goes. But yeah, I can't justifiably put it a tier above library, I don't think. Um, Gardens is pretty limited in its usefulness. I think, uh, oddly enough, especially in base only and like just the early sets, there's not a lot of good ways to get lots of cards in your deck in those sets. And actually, the good ways to do this came later, but Gardens was still pretty weak because it was still very situational. And I'm guessing this is here now because with Menagerie, you can do things like gain 30 horses in your turn and really buff up your gardens at the end of the game. Yeah, I'm going to guess like it's something like that is the reason it's here. There's also the card Groom has like a really killer card uh, <laughs> combo with gardens. Um, but, you know, those are just, I feel like those are kind of edge cases. And most of the times, gardens is either just a duchy or worse. And it's not too exciting. It doesn't add all that much to the game, even if you would like it to. Okay. Let's move on. We're getting into kind of the good cards now. Yeah, Moat. I'm just going to go out and say it. I think Moat is underrated. And this is where I'm putting my tier division. Um, yeah, Moat is a pretty solid all-around card these days. It's funny. Like, it was always pretty bad. It was a two-cost, uh, two-draw card that blocked attacks. And people used to say, of course, it was only good for blocking attacks. But nowadays, drawing two cards really isn't all that bad. There's a lot of ways. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for this. Uh, but it pretty much comes down to having more village options, having ways to make it free, and, and you know, more heavy trashing, what have you. Uh, yeah, a two-cost draw card is not a terrible thing to have. Like, you know, we've got lackeys. Of course, lackeys has other benefits, but, you know, there's other things to compare it to. And Moat doesn't come off looking too bad in that regard. Um, it also does block the attacks, and you know, that's nothing to sneeze at. It's pretty good. So I think, yeah, B-tier is solid for it. Next is going to be our Bandit. Yeah, Bandit is maybe one of the best Thief variants we've had. Maybe the best, of course. Uh, yeah, it can trash pretty much any treasure other than Copper. And uh, it gains you a gold when you do it. So you're guaranteed to get a good treasure, like even if you trash a silver. And that's pretty nice. Um, I think like, in multiplayer, this card is absolutely ridiculous from what I understand, or like what I would imagine to be the case. But it can also be ridiculous in two-player, though not nearly as much. It's a good way to gain economy and a good way to like kind of keep your opponent being forced to gain economy uh, toward the end game. So yeah, it's a pretty strong card sometimes, and then sometimes it's completely useless. But I think when it is strong, it's really, really oppressive, and that's probably why it's ranked up this high. Yeah, it has a big effect on the game, and gaining gold is not nothing. Of course, gold can be a useful card. Even if you're not buying stuff with it, you can use it to trash and uh, gain other stuff. All right, so the next card in the ranking is Vassal, which I'm, I'm not seeing. Whoa, whoa, where is... Okay, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, Vassal, like, it's a pretty low-cost uh, coin card. Yeah, it, they could chain into each other. They could chain into other action cards and things like that. They're, they're pretty solid, like... One of the best things about it is just that it costs three. It's easy to stock up on them, and it's kind of like a reverse conspirator in a way. Like It might let you continue your action chain. Um, you know, you can take a gamble and open with it sometimes, and it can work out. It can also be like a completely terrible card. You kind of have to build weird decks with it sometimes where you don't want to draw everything because you want Vassal to hit stuff, and it is possible to overinvest in them. But they can be really, really good, especially like in base-only games, I found. Um, there's some pretty good combos in there, particularly like Sentry and Festival are nice with this thing. Um, yeah, like I, I agree with the ranking being here. It's a pretty okay card. I've definitely warmed up to it some over time. And then there's Merchant, which of course, like if you have a silver in your hand, it's basically a peddler. You know, you get a coin and uh, there's no cost to your hand size and all that. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty solid card. Even if your deck only has one silver in it, a lot of the times you can ensure that you draw it or be reasonably sure you're going to draw it. And then Merchant is quite solid. So, yeah, but it's still, you know, it's solid, but it's also kind of average. Um, you, you could argue Vassal's better because it has, like, I guess it can do more, but Merchant's a little bit more dependable. So I think, yeah, they're definitely comparable cards and they're both at the cost of three. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so next is Workshop, and I'm kind of surprised as anyone to see this here, but maybe I shouldn't be. Workshop's probably a good bit better than it used to be these days. There's a lot better cards at the low-cost 
range than there used to be. And I mean, it effectively, it is kind of like a four coin one buy card. Uh, yeah, there you go. It's not the best one in the game, but it is pretty cheap. Um, I'll often open with it to get a bunch of cards that are a little bit cheaper there. Um, yeah, I think it's a solid enough card. It's pretty average, I think. Um, it'd be wrong to say Workshop is a bag card. No, um, yeah, it's a pretty good card. Like, if you want to continuously add stuff to your deck, even if, it, like, say, you have no other way to gain economy in the late game, you could use Workshop to gain silvers to bolster your economy. Um, like, as you're getting your engine uh, completely running, and needing to start getting closing in on green, right? Okay, and that's just a minor example. Silver, obviously, not the greatest use of this thing. You can get a silk merchant with this. Why would you gain a silver? There you go. Uh, but yeah, workshop, it's definitely come around. It's pretty good. Uh, next up on the list here is Poacher, which Poacher, I, I agree, is an average card. Um, it's basically a pure peddler. And in a lot of boards, when piles aren't going to empty, like no piles are going to empty, Poacher is just... A peddler. It's a great card. All right, you get a coin, and you know there's no hand size loss. It's cantrip that gives you coin. That's amazing. Um, now, if piles do go, it starts to get pretty weak. When only one pile is gone, poacher's not too bad. It's really when there's two or more piles gone that poacher starts to really suck. But you know what? If you have a trash for benefit card, poacher's a prime candidate for those. It's four cost is nothing to sneeze at uh, when it comes to using those. Um, you can also use the discard effect to put cards in your discard to trash them or seed them for next turn. So it's not even all that bad, like as a combo enabler there. Yeah, Poacher is all around pretty decent. Pretty decent. I don't buy it every game, but it's definitely got some stuff. Okay, next, uh, maybe to close out B tier, I'll think about it, is Council Room. Yeah, Council Room, of course, it's four draw and one buy, but it lets everyone else draw a card. Um, sometimes that extra card they can draw is really significant. Sometimes they were all already going to draw it anyway, or like it's just insignificant for whatever reason. And in those cases, Council Room is an awesome card. Okay, it's when it's bad is when you have to worry about something bad happening because they can draw that card. Okay, um, but you shouldn't be too worried about it. If you need that buy or you need that draw, you should just get Council Room. It's pretty strong. Like that's a lot of draw. Four cards is a lot. And um, yeah, Council Room is pretty decent. But, you know, because it does have that risk reward, I think putting it in the B tier is pretty solid. Um, like, I, I can't, you know, I don't disagree with that myself. Of course, it's my own decision. So there you go. Um, next is Money Lender. Yeah, we're not closing out the B tier. Who am I talking about? What, what am I talking about? Yeah, okay. Money Lender trashes coppers from your hand and gives you three coin. Um, it's a pretty good trasher. You don't want copper, and this is a good way to get a nice benefit out of it. Um, it's not nearly as good as it used to be. I mean, fact is, like, there's just better ways to trash copper these days. But, it, you know, it's still okay. It's still okay. It's still trashing stuff and giving you something, right? Like, trashers that don't give you anything suck. Yeah, Money Lender isn't that. All right? It's at least giving you something. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Money Lender's nice. All right? Next up is Remodel. Remodel, um, also in the B tier, I think. Uh, it can be really, really amazing, and it can be just okay. Um, one of the things that's nice is it's good early and late. It's nice for thinning out your estates. Um, it's also good for changing things like silvers that you needed early on into strong five-cost cards. It's also great for closing the game outs by emptying the province pile. Um, very flexible, uh, very good card. And one of the things that's great about it is it's not too overpowered. You know, I like it. It's not brain dead what you're going to do with it. You kind of got to think a little. I enjoy the card. I think from a design perspective, it's one of the best in the base set. Um, yeah, and this is where it belongs, in the B tier, okay? Um, next is going to be Smithy, also in the B tier. It's a pretty strong, plus three cards. It's very vanilla, but yeah, who cares? That's, that's really nice. Um, yeah, three cards. What a, you need that all the time. You need Draw is good. Draw is good in Dominion. There's not much else to say about it. Okay, next is market. Just really quick, market gives you one of everything. Most importantly, it gives you a buy and a coin. So, you know, it's an alternative to cards like silver and gold that can bolster your economy. Um, you know, if you win the market split, sometimes that can matter in certain games. Like having lots of buys is good, and this is a very nice way to get buys. Yeah, you're not going to be sad that you got markets in your deck. All right, now in past tier list, I was called a fool and a hater for putting Festival in a lower tier than it deserves, which is why I'm going to continue putting it in the B tier and say, yeah, it's a pretty good above average card. All right. Yeah, 
So Festival, of course, uh, <laughs> lets you play more terminal actions. It's a village variant there. Also gives you a buy. It's pretty nice, but doesn't uh, replace itself. Okay, there's no plus card on it, which means you're going to have to have other cards to make Festival strong. That hasn't changed. <laughs> okay, but Festival can still be a trap if there's nothing in the board that supports it. Okay, it's not nearly as splashable as Village, although it is pretty good. Okay, but like when you're drawing your cards, you have to account for the fact that Festival is not really a dead card, but it's a card that's not going to draw anything. And so it's kind of like you factor it in with provinces and terminal coin and those kinds of cards, right? It's things that you need to draw, not things that assist you in getting there. And that's the problem with it. That's why I'm not putting it as a staple. All right, you have to put a little bit more thought into it than that. So let's get into the A tier, why don't we? Okay, first up is Village. Yeah, Village is a really nice card. It's stayed good because it's a three cost card that does something that almost every deck wants, which is it gives you extra actions to play. All right, yeah, Village remains one of the best ways to get extra actions to this day, um, believe it or not. Um, and there's lots of ways to get cheap three cost cards, so it hasn't gotten bad. It's still there. Um, it's good, vanilla, but great. Next is Lab. Um, yeah, Lab, of course, is a pretty good draw card, all things considered. You know, it doesn't do anything fancy, just does the plus two cards, plus one action. Um, and yeah, like if you need to draw your deck, well, this is one of the things that's going to help you get there. It's going to be a little bit slow building all of them up. But, you know, with trashing, it's going to be just fine. You're going to be able to draw everything with Labs. Uh, this is assuming, of course, you're playing two-player. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with more than that, it might be a little dicier. Next up is Artisan. Artisan, of course, gains five cost cards, and that alone is very, very strong. It also lets you put a card on top of your deck, which can be a disadvantage, but it can also be good, because it means that you can save something that you couldn't play this turn for next turn. Or say you can gain a lab and top deck it to play next turn. That's really strong. Late game, Artisan can be used to gain duchies as well. Um, if there's no other buys, then you know that's pretty strong. Um, but overall, like the... You just can't go wrong with gaining a five cost action. The only drawback is Artisan cost six. What are you going to do? It has to cost something, right? It's really, really strong. Um, great card. Great card overall. Has its weaknesses, but it's great. Next, a Throne Room. Throne Room, really, really strong card. It doubles actions for you. You can chain Throne Rooms together and kind of do two different actions. You can gain plus actions where there weren't any. Uh, you know, if you played Dominion long enough, you know the six stuff you can do with Throne Room. And I don't need to tell you, it's right there. It only costs four, so it's super cheap and totally worth it. Yeah, Throne Room is amazing. B definitely belongs in A tier. Um, Militia is one of the most dependable attacks in the game. It just drops them down to three cards and gives you some coin. And it's cheap. You can open with it. You can pretty much always open with it. And yeah, so it's... Definitely very, very good, and it can be extremely annoying to go up against because it starts hitting you from, like, turn three, potentially. Yeah. So, yeah, Militia is good. It's not going anywhere. It's still strong. It's great. Okay. Now let's get in... Uh, I debate putting it in S tier, but I really think these days which is more of an A tier. Okay, there are ways to deal with the curses. Um, it, on its own, all it is is plus two cards, which isn't great. But, you know, it's still okay. It's still a draw card. You know, a bit like Moat. It's fine. It'll do. Cursing opponents, really, really good. Although there's just more and more ways to get rid of curses now or to totally mitigate them. So they're not nearly as strong as they used to be. But, you know, it gives you a lot of control over the game. It empties a pile for you. Yeah. It's still really, really strong. Um, you should still probably be, be buying Witch most of the time that it's there. Then we got our top two. You know, no surprises here. Okay, it's Sentry and Chapel. I think the position's a little debatable now. Sentry stays good later into the game, but Chapel is just super fuel. You can always open with it. It's always going to, like, be dependable, and you can trash stuff with it. Not much else to say here. It's one of the best cards in the game. It always has been, but Sentry is quite good as well, letting you uh, look at cards that are ahead and discard them, um, but also trash stuff. And that's about all I have to say. This is the base set. These are my tiers and Thunder Dominion's tiers. I don't agree with every single placing, but, you know, most of them I do. I think this is a pretty solid list. Let me know what you think, if I should do Intrigue or continue the series or just give up. <laughs>